Annie's brother jumped off a cliff. She went to claim the body. He removes the cloth, and her brother's spirit appears. Grace, it's not safe here. Hey! The next moment. Annie collapses, and the nuns take her to rest. Annie thinks the nuns are sneaking around. They all say Mike jumped off the cliff and died on the beach. But Mike's hair was so clean, there wasn't even a grain of sand in it. The priest explained that Mother Superior had cleaned up the body to make it easier for the police to investigate. But Annie was still suspicious. She went to the place where Mike had jumped off the cliff. There was a stone house. Annie went over and saw one of the nuns jump off the rock and die. Even more bizarrely, Several other nuns jumped to their deaths. At this sight, Annie frowned and fell into the sea. But just as Anne was about to drown, she was rescued. She was taken back to the convent to recuperate. But it was a dreary place. It was a palace, but there weren't many nuns. The mother superior, an old woman in menopause, persuaded Anne to stay. Together they became Jesus maids. But Annie wasn't religious. She just wanted to find out the truth about Mike's death and get out of here. But the nuns were angry. He has collapsed twice. I believe the visions have started. We must act quickly. I am not scared. I will take her on myself if need be. It is I, I who decide the girl's fate. You underestimate her power. The nuns seemed to want to go after Anne. The priest had other plans. He took Anne to the Cliffs of Penance. There's an amulet carved here, where penitents have to stand before a priest. Every time they confessed a sin, they would step back. Those who committed sins would fall to their deaths, just like Mike. But the priest saw nothing wrong with this death. In the church, death means meeting God, and that's a joyous moment. But Annie was convinced that Mike was not a sinful man. He would never have come here to confess his sins, let alone die believing in God. To find the motive for Mike's death, Annie found Mike's diary. But the diaries contained horrific drawings of monsters, and all the diaries were written in a special script. This script was their secret way of communicating as children. Michael specifically mentioned in his diary that Annie was adopted by his parents. She's been different since she was a child. She can't sense things that others can see, and she has the ability to bring the dead back to life. On one occasion, Annie brought her dead adoptive father back to life. 18 years ago, her father was shipwrecked and his boat drowned. When eight-year-old Annie heard the news, she prayed in the dark of night. Please don't let my dirty die. I beg you. Please. Please. Bring daddy home. The next morning, he did come back, but the horrible thing was, even though he was back from the dead, he changed his mind and put his wife and children in a big metal cage. He locked and in the cage will never- Dad? He just went a minute ago. Sorry. He was in a bad mood. Whenever he was in a bad mood, he would drag him out and torture him by his hair. His brother and mother were also abused and stole the key to the cage so his mother could escape and call someone else when his foster father tortured him again and threw the key to his mother. But as soon as she stepped out of the cage, his father realized he immediately went after her like a madman. Annie went downstairs to save Michael. The foster father grabbed Michael's mother and stabbed her. When she saw this, Annie didn't dare go to Michael's rescue. She couldn't run away without permission she had to hide. And Hid under the bed, shivering, she prayed over and over again that her foster father would not catch her. But who knows, when Anne's wife and foster father came to the bedside, suddenly, he was pushed to the ground by a force and could not get up. After this incident, the foster father was arrested for the murder of his wife. Little Mike and Annie were adopted, but the man who adopted them was a monster. They took the kids to the middle of nowhere and left Mike in the car. All he wanted was Annie. Annie struggled but the man fed her an unknown substance. Annie was about to do something about it when a big truck drove by. A big truck drove by, and the man's car suddenly drove by without warning. Because of this accident, Annie was able to escape. She grew up to be a doctor, saving lives. Their life got better and better. But then Mike jumped off a cliff in a Vatican convent. Annie came to look after him. But when she entered the convent, she felt suffocated and overwhelmed, especially when gazing at the voice of Jesus. Annie was terrified. There was something strange about this convent. Late one night, and wandered into the convent, she found a secret room. But when she went inside, Alice not only stabbed herself, but as she took her last breath, she knelt down in front of Anne 
and another nun saw her. Annie became a suspect in the murder of the black sister. It was then that the police noticed what seemed to be ominous signs about Annie. Her foster father was in prison. Her brother had committed suicide. Now, just after and arrived at the convent, there were problems at the convent. First, a couple of young nuns took advantage of the forbidden world. When the mother superior found out, she made all sorts of accusations against them, insulting them that they shouldn't have any emotions and should face God with this dirty body. The nuns jumped off a cliff to give thanks and now Alice has committed suicide. It seemed that wherever Annie went, there was death and wasn't the direct killer, but Alice died because of her. The police still held Anne in custody waiting trial, but the priest bailed her out with no clue as to what happened to Michael and is embroiled in a lawsuit, she also begins to wonder if she's really a bad person, and the one person who knows about her life is her adoptive father. Annie visits him in prison. Hi, Dad. I'm not your dad. Your dad's in hell with two horns sticking in his head. Why did you do it? Do what? Eat me. Starve me. Lock us in cages. I should have killed you. I died in the storm. Seeing her father's brutality, Annie doesn't want to talk anymore. She told him about Mike's death and that Mike was his only son. He was devastated by the news, but then... Bring him back. What? Save him what you did me. Annie didn't think he could do such a thing, so she refused. When the father heard the news, it suddenly became violent. If it hadn't been for the class, he would have chewed Annie to pieces like a rabbit husky. But her father's words touched in. She rushed to the convent to find out who she was. Instead, the priest gathered all the young women in the convent. He made them lie flat on their backs and offer themselves alive to God. <laughs> Another nun was horrified to see the one-eyed nun with her wrists broken. She ran back to the convent, grabbed a knife and slit her wrist. What have you done? She couldn't understand why these nuns were suddenly cutting themselves. She rushed over to cover the nun's wound to stop the bleeding. But at that very moment, and saw herself in the mirror, wearing a nun's habit. She ignored the nun's pain and turned away coldly. Soon after, the little nun died. The nuns were brainwashed to believe in an early death. Therefore, at the word of the priest, the nuns could commit suicide. When Annie saw her other self, she had to believe it all. He had a dark and evil soul that would bring death and evil to those around him. Annie rushed towards the priest. At that moment, the priest and all the nuns were sitting in the church. When he saw Annie come in, the priest took her by the hand and took Annie to purify her soul. He was going to take Annie to purify her soul and free her from evil. The nuns carried Annie and put her in front of the coffin. The priest told Annie that if she walked in voluntarily, she would receive the grace of Jesus. Annie believed the priest and walked in. But inside was a crypt, touching the walls of the crypt, and was transported back to the 12th century when she was a little girl. She was a little girl in the 12th century when the Pope brought her here. The Pope had brought him here and imprisoned him in this cellar. And it was an explosion, because Anne is the daughter of Satan. She may have human flesh, but she has evil blood running through her veins. And to keep that power, all the popes put her in the grave, until she was so tortured that she forgot her origins. The popes would release her to live on earth, but as soon as the evil begins to awaken, and will be imprisoned again, In the tomb you shall not aid. Seal the crypt! Dear God, let it dwell once again, and bring the weight of all heaven on this tomb. But Anne was too old to be left to her own devices. The cross in the church suddenly fell down and plunged straight into her neck. 